Hey everybody, it's Ryan. Welcome back to How Farms Work. We're in the Gator today. We've got the fencing supplies in the back. It wasn't raining all that hard when I left, but since I pulled out the driveway, it's gotten significantly worse. But uh, the reason we have the fencing supplies in the Gator is because last night, Hannah and I got home late. We had to feed the cows at 8.30. And when we went down below by the tube, there was a cow eating the exposed hay bale on the end of it. So they've got the wire panel pushed down in the steer lot um, behind the hot wire. So I need to remember to turn that off. But we need to run at least one, maybe two wires across that section to keep them from pushing or walking underneath the hot wire uh, in case the hot wire goes out and isn't working because they somehow got past it last night or at least didn't bother them that it was on. So um, we're gonna go out run a wire or two across that. Hopefully the rain slows down or quits and um, I can do this without getting too soaked. But this is what's going on today. Some genius came up with this as a windshield wiper. <laughs> Doesn't actually bother me, but it is kind of funny that someone looked at that and went, yep, that'll work. <laughs> Well, it quit raining. Let's do this quick. We're out in the Klein pasture where I had mulched and we found this tree on the fence. We're gonna cut it off. So it quit raining. Let's try to do this pretty quick, but looking at the tree from where I'm sitting, it looks like there is, the weight of the tree is on the upper end and on the bottom side, it looks like it's on the ground up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut it in the middle of the tree on the bottom, and that should allow the two halves of the tree to come down to like this towards the ground, and it should open up towards the chainsaw. If we go in there and we cut it on the top, when the pressure is like that, what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna pinch the chainsaw, and then we're gonna be in a world of trouble because that usually requires another chainsaw to free it or a lot of lifting power. So um, I think if I hop over on the neighbor's side and I do it carefully where I cut from the bottom up, it'll allow the tree to separate, it'll come down, and um, then I can make additional cuts if I need to to get the tree away from the fence line. Get those earbuds and those safety squints on. Here's the bottom half of that tree that I just cut off. I don't see any lightning marks or burns on the upper half of the tree. Of course, the upper half is facing away from me, the, on the side that was burned. Um, my guess is, is it was probably a lightning strike that set this dead tree. It was, uh, my guess is it was already dead. Set it on fire and uh, that caused it to fall because looking at it, the burn marks on this, the tree was obviously still standing when it was lit on fire, at least to me anyway. And it traveled right up the, right up the base. So uh, I don't really think that someone would have lit this on fire, at least any time recently, because you could not get to this spot without walking along the fence. So unless someone came back here to specifically light this on fire, I kind of doubt it. That's my guess, it's probably a lightning strike or something that set it on fire. This whole fence line, it's getting to the point now where I, it, there's not gonna be too many trees that are gonna be falling on the fence because I'd still like to clear out some of these that are up above us. That one, I am not gonna be cutting because that's an accident waiting to happen. 
Um, I thought of hooking onto it with a winch or something somehow and pulling it up with, a, with even like a wire, but I don't know how I would hook onto it on the upper half to pull it back towards us. So that's gonna be a problem for next year. The fence has already started to come back up. This is the fence line between us and the neighbors that have the Highland cow cattle. So it's imperative to me that we do get this fence line fixed up. And by clearing this off, I can walk this whole thing now and I'll drive it even just to make sure that the fence is still good. So um, legally it's actually this right half is our fence. And um, I wanna make sure that we're getting this fixed up to where it's turning cattle again, because uh, things like this lead to white and brown calves. <laughs> This took a little bit longer than I was expecting. This has been patched about 12 times. I ended up just ripping the woven wire out that was here and just putting up new wires, well, new used wires, but at least it'll turn cows. Next year we'll be back here ripping it out again. <laughs> Judging by all the wood behind me. Let's head over to the steer lot, throw a wire or two on over there and call it a day. I'm gonna walk down and see what we got. I'm gonna throw a wire or two across it. I just unplugged the electric fence, but Hannah tried taking the gator down into the steer lot last night and she almost got stuck. If She said if she stopped, she wouldn't have got back out. But um, we'll walk down, since it's a muddy mess, up on this half the lot, we're gonna just carry enough barbed wire down with us to uh, cover the hole that's down there. And hopefully that'll be enough. We're just gonna be patching a patch here, but I'm gonna run a barbed wire from over there across. I think this is where she got out at. Um, this wire was just pushed down and there was hoof prints coming out of here last night right over there and they went right up the tube. So, I might be able to throw a staple or something on there to hold it up, but I swear, if that ends up in the mud, one of you is getting turned into minced meat. Bad news, girls. go turn it on. Someone will learn a valuable life lesson. That's a little bit better than it was. Let's go look at that other spot.
we got those two spots fixed this afternoon. The fence line out in the pasture took longer than I thought it would because I replaced more of it than I was planning to. Uh, this right here went by pretty quick, but I'm not too proud to show what I did down there in this video because I meant to just get it up so it turns the cattle away. Uh, I was planning on possibly redoing that section of fence this summer um, and possibly putting in a fence line feed bunk of sorts down there. Uh, but the chicken coop would have to be torn down first, which I was planning on doing last summer, but uh, it kind of got away from me because I had an abundance of mulching jobs to do. But it's been on the list of things that needs to get done. But we're going to keep checking fence in the next couple of weeks here. Um, it's been plenty wet and I'm not too comfortable driving too much more around out in the pasture even just for how much rain we've gotten and how muddy it is. But um, we need to go down and do all of Travis's place yet. This out here, that fence that I just fixed today was the biggest spot that I've, I've known about um, that I've seen, but we still need to walk certain parts of it. And um, we always have one big spot to fix in that section of fence. So hopefully that's all that is really bad this year. There's spots here and there that need a wire thrown up, but otherwise this farm isn't too bad. Um, there's a few fence posts that need to get pounded too, like out in the field on the corner with the neighbors. Uh, the cows pushed that over because it was completely rotted off and they got out. So I can't let them out into the field until I got that, that spot fixed. But again, that's probably gonna be something that gets done this summer. So. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out all of our other videos. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat, all how farms work. And with that, catch us next Sunday at 11 a.m. See you next time.